It's been called one of the biggest financial frauds of all time. A complex web of money laundered in multiple countries. Investigators from at least six countries have been working together to collect evidence and uncover assets from Malaysia's 1MDB. The U.S. says $4.5 billion was misappropriated from the development fund. It was spent on luxury goods and even a Hollywood film. Now, Swiss investigators say up to $7 billion from 1MDB flowed through the global financial system from 2009 to 2015. We think it was a pretext. It was kind of a Ponzi scheme. It was used for bribery of foreign officials. It was used for motivating new officials to run against the legal requirements. Or it was just simply to reward them. Switzerland is investigating six people. Among them are former officials from 1MDB and Abu Dhabi Sovereign Funds and two officials with the Saudi energy group Petro Saudi. Meanwhile, a former Goldman Sachs banker is reportedly preparing to plead guilty in the US to criminal charges involving a scheme to steal billions from 1MDB. In Malaysia, the arrest and charging of former Prime Minister Najib Razak made headlines for days. Najib and 1MDB have denied any wrongdoing. But the new government led by Mahathir Mohamed, says it's just the beginning. Let's bring in TRT World's editor-at-large, Craig Peters, now in Paris. Uh, Craig, good to see you. Uh, so what more do we know about the Swiss investigation? Well, we know a little bit more about the mechanics. Seven billion from 2009 to 2015 uh, went into the Falcon Private Bank, another bank called BSI, uh, uh, Falcon had been the Swiss banking arm of the Abu Dhabi Investment Fund. Uh, those two banks were later taken over by EFG International, a very big Swiss bank. And in 2016, it was previously fined uh, $96 million uh, for dubious transactions uh, out of Singapore in relation to events in Malaysia. Uh, it, it appears, according to our sources, that um, this uh, Malaysian fund, if you want to call it, in Switzerland was managed uh, to a great extent by EFG people out of Singapore. Interesting developments. Uh, Craig, so a lot of this money allegedly went through the Swiss banking system. Why didn't alarm bells ring uh, loud and clear uh, from the regulators? Well... They didn't ring because the, we don't know a lot of the, the specific mechanics yet as, but it does seri appear that these deposits were in some way, shape or form being made in the name of a government or by senior government officials. The Swiss would not question that. Swiss bank banks originally were quite aggressive of going after uh, uh, rummy deposits that emanated from either drug deals or arms sales. After 9-11, um, uh, the United States made them crack down even further on uh, money that might be terrorist money, which led to a giant hunt for unpaid taxes. The Swiss banking system was faced with a shortfall. That it was during that time, around 2004, 2005, they started looking to uh, Asia for new clients and set up major operations in Singapore, Hong Kong, Beijing, Shanghai, and elsewhere. And that's where they've been making their money and that's been their big market. Um, precisely how much money do you think the Swiss banks could have made out of all of this? Well, some very, very rudimentary arithmetic. Seven billion dollars, let's say it was deposited all at once over seven years. Average interest rate over that time period in Swiss, a basic account, 2.5%. So you're looking at $1.2 uh, billion in interest over seven years. Subtract $96 million in fines, uh, which they've paid so far, and you're looking at an interest profit of $1.129 billion. Obviously, uh, that's very rudimentary, but it gives you an idea of how these Swiss banks make money on top of charging their clients a fee 
for managing these accounts and, of course, lumping all their clients' money together in one lump sum so they can make interest on it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. On top of that, Swiss banks do ring fence off large amounts of money right. that obviously right. make interest that they use to pay fines. Uh, Craig, regulations have tightened up, as you mentioned earlier, in, in Switzerland over the years, but it still goes on, doesn't it? Well, it does because it's, it is very difficult, human nature, it's very difficult for a banker, be Swiss or otherwise, to turn down an account, uh, particularly when the amounts of money are so vast, and especially as are when the money is coming in from a sovereign nation, whether it's Russia, whether it's Malaysia, uh, that gives that deposit an extra air of credulity. You know, okay. how deeply do you want to do, do a due diligence on, on yeah. the prime minister of Malaysia yeah. or a senior Malaysian official? Indeed. It's a very interesting subject. Craig Peterson, Paris, thank you. <laughs>